Hey guys, today we're going to talk about heparin induced thrombocytopenia. But before we get into that, let's just cover a little bit about heparin itself. So, as we know, heparin is used as an anticoagulant agent which inhibits thrombin, and it does this by activating antithrombin 3. So let's say we have fibrinogen, which gets converted to fibrin. And fibrin is one of the main important components of the coagulation cascade, right? So we don't want to make this fibrin. And in order for fibrinogen to get converted into fibrin, we need thrombin. So if, the, if we give the patient heparin, Heparin will activate antithrombin 3, which will then inhibit thrombin. Therefore, we're going to have inhibition of fibrin production. Heparin is also an immediate anticoagulant with a short half-life. Therefore, we can use it in conditions such as pulmonary embolism, DVT. We can also use it in pregnancy since it does not cross the placenta. And some of the important side effects of heparin are obviously bleeding because we are inhibiting production of fibrin, osteoporosis. So, um, if we have a patient who already suffers from osteoporosis, we obviously don't want to give her heparin. Instead, we can give her another drug in the heparin family, which is a low molecular weight heparin, and it's called anoxoparin, which does not cause osteoporosis, okay? Which is a high yield point that we need to know, okay? So, anoxoparin. And lastly, another important side effect is heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, which we're going to talk about now. If someone receiving heparin develops a new or a worsening thrombosis, or if their platelet counts falls, we can assume heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. And here's why. Now, sometimes heparin acts as a haptin by binding to platelet factor 4. So here's our heparin. It binds to platelet factor 4 and it forms a haptin, which will then stimulate the immune system, resulting in antibody production. Okay, so uh, our immune system gets stimulated and then we start making antibodies. These antibodies are usually of the IgG class, which will form a complex with heparin and PF4, which is our platelet factor 4, in the bloodstream. So let's just imagine that this is our IgG binding to heparin and uh, platelet factor 4, forming, forming a complex, okay? Now this results in platelet activation which initiates the formation of blood clots leading to decrease platelet counts and eventually thrombocytopenia. So if we have a patient who suffers from HIT, he or she will be in a hypercoagulable state. And at the same time, they will have thrombocytopenia.
So how do we treat a patient who is suffering from HIT? Well, we can take them off of heparin and put them on either lipuridin or bivaluridin, which are alternatives to heparin, or we can give them um, argotorbin. Either way, they all have the same mechanism of action, and that is to directly inhibit thrombin. So directly inhibit thrombin.